Okay, so before endocrinology uh, discussion, I'd just like to draw a very simple diagram, okay? Uh, to just discuss about the different locations and what are the possible pathology might be going on along with that particular gland. of <clears throat> all the gland locations. So we'll start from the hypothalamus, okay? So this is the hypothalamus. All the releasing hormones are released from here, okay? They have the connection fibers to the pituitary gland. So <clears throat> among from the hypothalamus, you'll be expecting growth hormone, releasing hormone, or maybe gonadotropin releasing hormone, or thyrotropin releasing hormone, or the TRH, and corticotropin releasing hormone, or the CRH, etc. right? And uh, there is also two hormones that are produced from the hypothalamus, which is known as the oxytocin, also known as the oxytocin, okay, also known as the love hormone, and vasopressin, or antidiuretic hormone, okay? So these also, these two hormones are also coming from the hypothalamus. However, they're stored in the pituitary gland, okay? So they're formed in the hypothalamus, but they're stored in the pituitary gland. And if this, uh, if you consider this might be the uh, pituitary gland, so it has the anterior pituitary, and that's the posterior pituitary, and it has a connecting stalk, which is connected to the hypothalamus, like here, you can't see it, but it runs within the brain. So that's the pituitary stalk. <clears throat> so the nerve endings are uh, from the hypothalamus come into the pituitary gland and these releasing hormones stimulate the release of the uh, pituitary gland hormones. Okay, so from the anterior pituitary, uh, the hormones are growth hormone, okay, prolactin. And then there is thyroid stimulating hormone. There is follicle stimulating hormone and the luteinizing hormone. And um, well from the posterior pituitary it lies the uh, oxytocin and the antidiuretic hormone, okay? So um, this is debatable. A lot of people say that there is a middle part in between the anterior and the posterior pituitary gland. Uh, and from the middle part comes the melanocytic stimulating hormone, but uh, in human, uh, this, uh, this is actually rudimentary, okay? So this is uh, seen in the lower class, uh, maybe in the rats or maybe in the frogs, okay? And they have the melanocyte stimulating hormone. This is actually particularly involved with sleep. This is not really important. Anyway, so we will discuss about what are the uh, possible pathology that can arise from here. For example, uh, along with the growth hormone, if this is deficient, okay, so from the anterior pituitary, if the growth hormone abnormality, so it can be either high or low, right? So if this is high, then you can expect acromegaly. Okay, and if this is low, uh, it can be further divided into two varieties. Uh, one is the um, dwarfism or gigantism is based, uh, no, this is also seen in the acromegaly and gigantism. So particularly for paces, uh, sorry, uh, MRCP part one preparation, you should focus on the acromegaly if this is more, okay? And, but if the epiphyseal plate uh, synthesis uh, or the fusion has not taken place, then it can lead to gigantism, okay? So this occurs in the prepubertal stage. If there is excessive amount of growth hormone secretion, then it can lead to gigantism. And if the growth hormone is deficient, then in the prepubertal stage, you might expect to find dwarfism. But in the postpubertal stage, you might expect findings like fatigue, tiredness, all these vague complaints, okay? It doesn't have any particular syndrome. So, um, okay, this one is the, this can happen any point of the time, but particularly gigantism is prepubertal, when epiphyseal plates have not fused. Okay, so far, are you following me? Dwarfism is also a prepubertal stage. So when the epiphyseal plates have not fused yet, if the growth hormone is deficient, then you might expect dwarfism to be present. And when the plate has not been fused yet, if the growth hormone is excessive, then you might expect gigantism, okay? Uh, but acromegaly can happen at any stage, so it doesn't have any like association with the epiphyseal plate uh, fusion. So acromegaly is basically growth hormone excessive state. We'll just remember it like that, okay? Acromegaly is growth hormone excess. And if in uh, adult people, 
if the growth hormone is deficient, mostly due to maybe uh, it's either pituitary tumor or maybe pituitary irradiation or maybe some surgery or maybe hypothalamic failure, then if there is growth hormone deficiency, most of the time in adults, we see features of tiredness, fatigue, okay, sleepiness, low mood. These are the important features. Uh, <clears throat> next one, we'll go back to the picture. Okay. From here, we uh, prolactin, okay? If there is excessive secretion of prolactin, then this leads to a condition known as prolactinoma. Have you ever heard of this before? Prolactinoma? What was the commonest feature of prolactinoma? Can anybody tell me? Gynecomatia, very good, and? Gynecomatia. Lactation, okay, yes. Or? In male, there might be whitish discharge coming from the nipple as well, okay? And tiredness is a very important finding. Lactation or galactoria, okay? And in females, amenorrhea, okay? And? Yes, if the uh, source, if the tumor is big enough to compress on the optic chiasma, then you might experience compressive symptoms like headache or visual difficulty, okay? Visual difficulty. So we'll discuss about the prolactinoma later on, don't worry about that, just in general idea, like which hormone is associated with what type of pathological uh, findings, okay? So next up is uh, prolactinoma with TSH. TSH abnormality, again, it can be hypo or hyperthyroidism, okay? And we'll discuss about this today. And the follicle stimulating and the luteinizing hormone, these are particularly important for secondary sexual characteristics, okay? So we can obviously see that if a person is deficient of this FSH or the LH, they will lose their sexual drive. In female, it might cause oligomenorrhea or amenorrhea. It might cause menstrual problem. It might cause low mood and loss of sexual desire, erectile dysfunction. So these are the problems that can be associated with low levels of FSH or LH, okay? All right. <clears throat> Next up is uh, the posterior pituitary gland. And uh, here we can see the oxytocin. Uh, oxytocin is not really like a MRCP hot topic. We know that oxytocin is particularly important in, uh, in sex during the sexual intercourse. It causes cervical contraction in case of female and it also helps in breastfeeding, okay? So that's all that you need to know. Apart from that, nothing else. And uh, some studies have been shown that oxytocin is also known as the happy hormone. Apart from the serotonin, this is also known as the happy hormone. Antidiuretic hormone is particularly involved in urine. What does it do? The term antidiuretic hormone. So it reduces diuresis. So thereby it causes urinary concentration, right? So can you, anybody tell me which uh, problem lies with antidiuretic hormone inappropriate secretion? What is it known? Siad. Siad, yes. Any other uh, problem that can uh, arise with the ADH level uh, alteration apart from the Siad? Diabetic insipidus as well. Okay, DI. Diabetes insipidus, all right. Uh, so uh, if we go a little bit below, we can see that there is the thyroid gland. So it can have either hypo or hyperthyroidism like Graves' disease, Hashimoto thyroiditis. We'll discuss about this later. So this is either hyper or hypothyroidism. And we can see like four glands on each, so two glands on each side of the thyroid gland known as the parathyroid hormone, the parathyroid gland. So parathyroid hormone gland can have either hyperparathyroidism or hypoparathyroidism or pseudo hypoparathyroidism okay so these are the problems that can happen with parathyroid abnormality moving along we can see that there are two suprarenal glands which is known as the adrenal glands sitting on top of each kidney right so if you divide the adrenal gland into two parts this is known as the cortex and this is known as the medulla from the cortex we can divide it into farther three parts right you can remember it like gfr G, sorry, GFR. So this is the, uh, from the outermost layer comes the glucocorticoid. From the middle layer are the fasciculator. This is the, the, I forgot the name actually, zona reticularis, zona fasciculator and something like that. So glucocorticoid, mineralocorticoid and uh, from the R layer comes the sex uh, cortisol. Okay. And from the medulla, the abnormality lies in the 
uh, like fucromocytoma. Fucromocytoma. And here, like if there is excessive amounts of uh, steroid, then that can lead towards Cushing, right? And if there is uh, low levels of steroid, I'm just saying in general terms, we'll discuss about this details later on, that is known as the Addison's, okay? Another excessive amount, which is excessive mineralocorticoid, known as cons. Okay, all right. And yeah, sorry, the pancreas one. From the pancreas, uh, which one, which endocrinological problem is the most predominant? Diabetes. Diabetes, okay. It can be both either type 1 or type 2 diabetes. Okay, any other? Insulinoma. Insulinoma, very good. Okay, insulinoma, both type 1 and type 2 diabetes. Okay, so that's all, right? We are done with the endocrinology system. We just drew the basic, uh, you know, like glands and located in different parts of our body. Their main, uh, you know, like sub variations, and what are the possible pathology association that can present with each of the gland abnormality? Okay.